sufficient thanks. So take my life, transform, renew and change me that I might be a living sacrifice. We're again considering this topic of give thanks. And Rahan Rajaratnam will be sharing with us from Romans chapter 12 on that very topic of being people who give of ourselves to be living sacrifice. So I hope you're encouraged this week of Peno Connect. We haven't just got Rahan sharing with us. In a very short while, we'll be hearing from the Costorni family now, Vlad and Anna and their two boys. Ivan and Avde left us at the end of last year to travel and move to Orlando in Florida, where Vlad took up a position closer to the head office of European Christian Mission. And Vlad's been providing vital online mentoring support for church planters across Eurasia for the past six months, and he's been very busy. So look forward to an update from the Costorni family. They're a great bunch of people and we do miss them. After the Castornis, we're going to have a song as we often do on Pano Connect. But what I'd like you to do during that song, if you're not ready already, is go to your pantry, find a drink or get some water. I've got rainbow burst vegetable juice here. It's the right color. Go and find a cracker or a bun because we're having communion after the song. So make sure you go and get your elements ready and David Stewart will be leading us through communion together. Thanks for joining us. Be encouraged today. Pano Connect. Hello, Hello dear Hello. Hello. family. Hello. Hello. Ah, hello. 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 Hello, dear family at Penn and Hills Baptist Church. We're so thankful for this opportunity to share with you a little bit about our life here in America. And first of all, we want to thank you uh, for your support, for your care, for your thoughts, for your love, and for various many prayers. Thank you so much for um, the connection that we've been having with you. Um, in spite of the physical distance, we're still connected in our hearts. Thank you so much for being with us here and ministering with us here. We've been doing well here in America. We're still adjusting to the culture. Uh, it's been challenging in the beginning because um, we still are missing Australia a lot and are missing our family uh, and friends back there. Uh, but in general, we've been doing well and this is uh, an exciting opportunity for our family to grow in our trust um, to God. and. Um, to trust him that he cares for us and uh, he cares for our needs and walks with us in the midst of various trials and um, 
And we also want to share a little bit about um, the homeschooling and the ministry. So maybe Ivan will start first and share about his life here in, in America. Yeah, it's been great. God answered our prayers by giving us a violin teacher. And homeschooling is great as well. Um, he's a great teacher, and I get to spend more time with the whole family. That's great. Thank you, Ivan. And it seems like Avdi also has something to say. How are you doing, sweetheart? Good. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. And now uh, Vlad will share a little bit about our ministry. Yes, thank you very much for your support and for your love. Transition was really, really hard, actually. But <laughs> we survived, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's good. Now we more and more understand what should we do and how. And ministry-wise, it's a very good place to be. Uh, we're so glad to be here because it's a lot of work, especially now during the coronavirus crisis. Uh, I, I had many, many meetings, which is extra extra time spending with church planters and church planting leaders. Uh, this is great. Thank you for your support. Please pray for this ministry. We have a lot of opportunity and now I need to be really wise to pick right people to meet. And also I would like to share some from the Bible. I was reading recently Mark chapter 4 and I want to read. He told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you but to those on the outside everything is said in parables. Mark chapter 4, verse 11. Yeah, many people don't understand many things. And here we can read that people kind of look through the parables, through the not clear what's going on. But for us, secrets of God belongs to us. This is great. Ivan can read the next one. For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. Mark chapter 4, verse 22. And what should we do with the secrets? And it's very clear. We need to disclose the secrets. And the secrets about Christ, his, cross, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, and about his second coming. Please help people around to understand the secrets of God. And please be faithful, be joyful, and be safe. We love you. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.
We're here to share communion together, as our, is our practice on the first Sunday of the month. Small group gathered here with me in the church, and many of you at home sharing in this. My mind turns to that first communion, the Lord's Supper, just a small group closed away in an upper room, and they shared these same elements that we will do. Then came the early church, not in big buildings, but in homes, families, small group, doing as we do here, as Jesus asked us to do. For on that first night, Jesus took bread. He broke it and said, take this, eat and remember me. Then Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you do this. Remember me. So I want you to take the cup, hold the cup, so we can share together as one. Let us drink. And as we drink, let's give thanks for our Saviour. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great plan of salvation. We thank you so much for Jesus, broken for us that we might be made whole with you. His blood shed that we might be washed clean. And we thank you in his name. Amen. Dear God, thank you for making Jesus die on the cross and make him lose an amen. amen. Dear God, thank you for us to go to school and all our friends and all our teachers are here back at school. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we just want to keep praying, Lord, for the, for the nurses and the doctors who are looking after people who are sick right now. We continue to pray for the coronavirus. Lord, that you will um, stop the coronavirus soon spreading across the world. We want to, Lord, pray right now also for things happening in the world. Lord, we think of America right now and the chaos that's there. Father, we pray that you would bring peace soon. Uh, we pray that the unrest will stop. Uh, dear God, we thank you, Lord, for um, this, this period of time where you have really sustained us and you have really looked after and taking care of all of us. God, we pray um, and bring before you Eastwood and the revitalization plans and the team. We pray uh, for wisdom uh, for all those who are going to be helping to make decisions um, about how Eastwood is going to look and even the physical site plans. Uh, we pray that you will give um, them, yeah, as I said, wisdom about um, what is the best way to go ahead, but Lord, may they trust in your goodness and your sovereignty uh, first and foremost. Dear God, um, we thank you that in this period of time uh, where things have been different, that we've been still, uh, that we've been able to have Keno Connect, that we've been able to um, see our church family and hear from your word, Lord. Uh, we thank you for Pastor John and, um, and the leadership team at church. Uh, we do. We just pray, Lord, as we uh, resume back to normal church, uh, that you will help us help that transition to be smooth. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us uh, that soon enough we can gather again uh, as as a, as a community physically um, at, in the church building. Amen. Uh, Lord, we also want to pray and thank you for all the Sundays, all the things that the Sunday school teachers have been doing to, um, I guess, keep the kids involved in church, even though it looks very different to. Uh, what it's been like in the past. And we pray that the kids will continue to um, love you and, and learn about uh, you and um, 
may their relationships continue to to deepen um, during this time, even though they cannot meet face to face. Amen. 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 Does anyone say bye bye? So, but look at the camera. Say bye bye. Bye bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm on another big adventure. <laughs>、well, welcome back to Kids and Their Life. Today we're going to look at the word transformation and what exactly that is. Let's look at Romans chapter twelve, verse one to two. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's think of a butterfly. Butterfly is my favorite insect. It can fly. It's beautiful. But when the butterfly starts its journey, it was a small, helpless caterpillar. So the Bible tells us to be transformed, like. How the caterpillar becomes a beautiful、um, butterfly after being transformed. Let's look at chap-、uh, Romans chapter twelve, verse two. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word "renew" is to renovate, to change. It's like when we buy an old house. We want to replace everything with the new stuff. We want to tear out the old stuff and replace it with the new stuff, which is. Clean, fresh, and new. So when you go through this week, I want to encourage you to pray for His wisdom. His wisdom has the power to change us, to transform us. It will change the way we think, the way we act, the way we live. Lastly, I want to give you a one challenge for this week. We are going to create a music video, and I want you to take involved. So give a listen. This song and get familiar with it. I want to see a video of you guys dancing along, sing along, air guitar, air piano, and send in. Also, I'm going to looking forward to hearing from you guys about how you guys find these lyrics. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See you next week. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to Peno Connect. And as you know, I mean, we've been doing things very differently to stay connected. And a big thank you to John and his team and Aaron for enabling this Peno Connect to take place so that you and I can stay connected as we wait patiently to the day that we can all meet together in this church again. So for today's devotion, I picked a passage from one of my favorite books in the Bible, the book of Romans. And um, I mean, many of you would know that um, I do really favor this book for several reasons. But as you would know, I mean, Paul writes to the churches in Rome. He hasn't see, still seen these people. He hasn't had a personal relationship with these people, but he has heard great things about the church in Rome. This may have been numerous small churches, but Paul writes to them and gives this wonderful book that we have today. And it's a strong book of Christian doctrine, telling the Christian what the gospel is, what we truly believe in, and then eventually sets the focus on the Christian. And in view of the gospel, and in view of God's grace and mercies, this is how you ought to live. So in the first four chapters of Romans, Paul very clearly describes the condition of man and the wonders of the gospel, the great news. So in Romans 3.23, Paul says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So no one is righteous. Everyone born into this world is under that condemnation. And then the atoning sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is clearly presented in the first few chapters in uh, the book of Romans. I mean, just going beyond the first four chapters in you know, chapter six and uh, verse 23, Paul says, for the wages of sin is death. So the punishment for sin is death meaning eternal separation from God. And in Romans 4 and verse 25, he summarizes the, the message of salvation. And he says, he was delivered, speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised up from life for our justification. So he finishes these four chapters and then he starts Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 with one of the three verses in the book of Romans that starts with the word therefore. So he says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not alienated anymore, not separated, but at peace with God. So this is the result of the gospel. And once you believe, this is what you and I have. And then in the next seven chapters, Paul goes into significant detail in, in laying out the immense blessings and immense privilege that you and I have as a Christian. And right in the middle is your second therefore verse. And he says in chapter eight and verse one, therefore there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. You're not condemned anymore. You've been bought and now you have peace with God. And what a privilege, folks, what a privilege it is. And then in the next, the last four chapters in the book of Romans, Paul turns the spotlight on the Christian and tells the Christian, in view of all what God has done for you, in view of the gospel, in view of his grace, in view of his mercy, this is how you ought to live. And he begins this, the next portion of the Romans from chapter 12 to chapter 16 with another therefore verse. And let me read that out to you. So he says, therefore, I urge you brothers 
in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Then he goes on in verse two to say, do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So here a Christian is asked to examine his or her life. In view of God's mercy, in view of all these riches in Christ, Paul says, therefore I urge you brothers, I urge you in God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So what does this actually mean? So Paul is urging the Christian, that means strongly persuading the Christian, almost pushing the Christian to consider giving his body as a living sacrifice to God, which is the right and reasonable response to what God has done for you. This offering is a deliberate act. This is something that you and I would do often in a deliberate manner, frequently examining oneself and saying, no, at this point, I'm going to further offer my body as a living sacrifice to the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, Paul talks about every member of our body. If it's our eyes, we are now going to be turning away from all the issues that, 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 that are incorrect that we may be seeing and we may be feasting on, but instead turning and looking at Christ so that Christ would give us a new vision, a new vision for the needy, a new vision for the unsaved. The tongue will stop cursing and being angry, but instead praising and lifting others up rather than putting people down. Years that are willing to listen and obey and you can go on. Every member of the body offered to the Lord Jesus Christ as living sacrifice so that he can take, he can use and, and bring glory to God the Father. This is a reasonable act of worship in view of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us so that God can use every part of our body to be his blessing. And in verse two in that passage, there are two important verbs. So Paul talks about not conforming to the pattern of the world, but instead being transformed. So, so basically Paul is saying, do not conform. Do not be like the world. Do not just accept all the rules and norms of the normal society and not ask questions. Do not just slip into that mode. Folks, I'll tell you, it's so easy as Christians to just imitate the world. And we start imitating it in our lives. And I'm sure all of us have been guilty of this at some point or other, to be just more like the world, to conform to the patterns of the world. And this invariably leading to compromising, to compromising our faith and compromising of what we truly believe and letting the Lord Jesus Christ down in our lives, compromising, eventually leading to denial and betrayal. So folks, Paul's message to the Christian is very clear on this regard. He's telling the Christian, look here, don't conform to the patterns of the world. But instead, he says, be transformed. Transformed, meaning change to be different. And the transformation that he talks, uh, talks about is by the renewing of your mind. He's asking for the Christian to deliberately examine and continuously agree to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this transformation, folks, takes place initially at the point of our salvation, but it continues right through life at every point in our life. It's something that we really need to want 
and actively seek. As we read the word of God, we let God speak to us, transforming our lives, transforming how we think, transforming how we would act by our prayer life, by meeting with other Christians in our lives. So, so it's a deliberate act that the Lord Jesus Christ, through the message from Paul, is asking of each Christian, don't conform, but be transformed. So at this point, if we ask ourselves, what actually is true worship? Is it meeting together as Christians and singing hymns? Is it praying? Is it the other Christian activity we take part in? It's all that and much more, much more in what we've been asked to do in these two verses. So that one day we like Paul can say, truly it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. So I just want to leave these two verses with you today to continue to challenge you and ask you, ask yourselves, and ask, as you look back and look at all the wonderful things that has happened to you and I as Christians, and in response to that, of our bodies as a living sacrifice and to continue to be transformed and not be conformed to the pattern of this world. So that's the message for you today. Some of you in our pastoral chats have asked me how I'm doing. Hence, it got me thinking really hard about my, what my days look like. I've been trying to start my day with God, being still and quiet, to listen, to read, and to hear what He has to say. And then onto my breakfast, and to my computer, and the rest of the things I have to do. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. What does it mean? What is God's kingdom and His righteousness that you and I have to seek first? The message version of this verse reads, Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Well, I shall leave you to ponder over my question. What is God's kingdom and his righteousness that you and I have to seek first? I'm happy to chat with you about this when I next get you on the phone. For news and prayers this week, first up, returning back to church. Although the authorities have said 50 people can attend religious services, and you are probably wondering when we can come back to face-to-face -to -face meetings, it is important that our church need to consider if we can safely re recommence services and abide by the new restrictions. We need a safety plan in place. Some restrictions include social distancing of 1.5 meter and four square meter rules. There will be no singing, no food to be served, and we need to take record of attendances. John and I would be happy to hear from you if you have any input on this matter. The elders team will be meeting on Thursday the 11th of June and will discuss this matter. We will provide you with an update next Sunday. Eastwood Partnership. Pray for Johnny to be able to reach more people, more of the Eastwood members with the master plan and that they will be excited with the new work and be supportive. Thank you for your prayers. We had a really um, encouraging and productive meeting on Tuesday, the revitalization team. Please refer to the bulletin for a copy of the revitalization newsletter for updates. Baptist Association has released their 2019 annual report. Please refer to, an, to the email for a copy of this report. PHCCEA Appeal. I pray that you will consider supporting this ministry and to give generously. Refer to the bulletin on how to give. Please pray for complete healing for Molly, who is now back home from hospital. Pray for her rehabilitation 
and also cover Henry and Molly in your prayers. Pray for Alexandra, Alexandra's health and for a good report from the heart specialist. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you again next week. God bless. Okay, that's it folks for another Sunday. Hope you enjoyed the program and hope you'll have a great week. God bless.